Thanks for stopping by the channel. This is Each One Reach One. Glad you guys are here today. Let us give all praise, honor, and glory to the Most High God, Yahweh, Hashem, Yahweh Shai. I am grateful for another opportunity to breathe, another opportunity to, 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 to think, to, to have my own uh, mental faculties uh, leading me because there are many today, man, who are moving throughout the world without the use of their of their full mental capacities. And some people are being led by other people having no control or autonomy over themselves. And that's wild. It's a wild time to be in, right? All the things that we see are supposed to make us grateful for our own predicament, our own circumstances. So I hope you're looking around, you're being watchmen, you're watching what's going on in the world and you're just, you're waiting. And while you're waiting, you're, you're keeping the commandments. While you're keeping the commandments, you're feeding your spirit, all right? Not just your flesh, feed your spirit. And in the spirit of feeding our spirit, let's talk about spiritism, how spiritism is forbidden. Spiritism is very big among Christians, among people who call themselves Christians. They don't quite, you know, adhere to the tenets of what Christianity says it's about but they do stick to the tenets of what Christianity is actually founded upon. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. And so you got to stay away from all these soothsayers and all of these diviners and people who speaking about their dreams and, you know, stay away from the astrology and, you know, the horoscopes and all these types of things, right? Walk in alignment with God because, Truth be told, and I say truth be told, because there are many lies uh, of uh, Christian doctrine that tries to appease the people, mainly the women, who take part in many of these practices in order to pander to their largest base, which are women, in order to be able to extract the most amount of resources, aka dollars, from said demographic. All right. So Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse nine, when thou art come into the land, which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. Israel is supposed to be separate, set apart and not follow after the traditions, the customs and the ways which were called abominations of the other nations. Right. So if the Most High God said the ways of the other nations were abominations unto him, then why would John 316 pertain to all these other nations if them and their ways were considered abominations? He even called them heathens. He told the Israelites and chastised them, chided, chided them over and over and over again about going after the ways of the other nations. Right. So, again, that's just something else to, to put on your mind. As we go through this, there shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire or that useth divination or an observer of times or an enchanter or a witch and witchcraft is heavily rampant among so-called Christian women. A lot of so-called Christian women, and let's be real, I'm going to call out my own women of my own nation. Black women, Christian black women are heavily into witchcraft. They use Christianity and the church as a cover for their wicked denom uh, wicked denomination, <laughs> for their wicked demonic activity. All right. So, yes, I'm speaking to you. Be admonished, ladies, or a charmer or a consulter with familiar spirits or a wizard or a necromancer, for all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord thy God doth drive them out from before thee. Thou shalt be perfect with the Lord thy God. For these nations which thou shalt possess hearkened unto observers of times and unto diviners. But as for thee, the Lord thy God hath not suffered thee so to do. And it's going to be the same in the end, as he just stated that it was before. The Israelites are going to possess these nations who hearken now unto observers of times and unto diviners. 
and these many of these Christian groups and organizations and and members and, and you know I see them all over YouTube right all over social media I see their videos all the time they're constantly uh trying to divine and you know want to want to guide people via their dreams and you know they're constantly trying to prophesy about things that are to come and the things that they prophesy to come never come and what they always do is they always wind up making a continuous stream of updates to their prophecies. They got to explain to you how come their prophecy failed and they give you reasons why the prophecy failed and, and then they give you information like they received some new updated information, you know, to let you know, you know, why it failed and, and why it will be fulfilled. But you know, it's going to be fulfilled in a different time. And then they they give you that time frame and they give you that time period. They give you that date. They give you whatever it is they need to give you in order to make you feel like they are uh, being led by the Holy Spirit. And then what happens in process of time, that prophecy fails. And then they have to update it again and update it again. And these people continue to have a large following. How come all of these people have not stopped following them yet? when they keep prophesying lies, right? Verse 13, the Lord thy God will raise up unto thee, speaking to the Israelites, a prophet from the midst of thee, of thy brethren, like unto me, this is Moses speaking, unto him he shall hearken. This is prophesy, uh, him prophesying of the coming of Christ. Letting the Israelites know that the most high God will raise up unto the Israelites, a prophet from the midst of them, came out of Judah, of thy brethren, like unto me. Unto him ye shall hearken. In that day, you're going to stop listening to me. The law of Moses, what you know and what you follow that I've said, you're going to cease to follow that and you're going to begin to listen to the king. That's what he was telling them. That the law of Moses had an expiration date. The law of the king would supersede the law of Moses. But there are many so-called uh, Old Testament-only Israelites who don't get it. Moses himself, who they make their idol, they make Moses their God. He told them that the time was going to come when they were to stop listening to him. That they would no longer listen to what he said, to what he instituted. And they would listen to what the king instituted that, that would come, that prophet that would come. Christ, Yahweh Shai. Verse 16, according to all that thou desirest of the Lord thy God in Horeb in the day of the assembly, saying, let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God, neither let me see this great fire any more that I die not. And the Lord said unto me, they have well spoken that which they have spoken. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren, like unto thee, and I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. And that's what Christ did. He told us that his words was not his own. What he came to do was fulfill the word, the will of the father. That his doctrine was not his own. But his that sent him. In keeping with the prophecy. And it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words, which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. All right. And again. Christians love to say, oh, see, it says whosoever. Yes, whosoever of the people who I'm speaking to and speaking about, you got to keep it in context. He's speaking to the Israelites, all right? Speaking to the Israelites, telling them he will send them a prophet and whoever, whosoever among the Israelites who he sends Christ to, whosoever of them will not hearken unto his words, which he shall speak in the name of the father, it would be required of him. But the prophet which shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in the name of other gods, even that prophet shall die. Now, this is where you Christians get a chance to, to enter the chat because many of your, your leaders in your churches um, fancy themselves to be prophets, right? They fancy themselves to be prophets. And what they do is they presume to speak a word 
in the name of God, which God the Father have not commanded them to speak. And they speak in the name of other gods. So they shall die. But wait a minute, what other gods? They only speak about Jesus. Ding, 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 ding. Jesus is not the name of the son of the most high God. And he wasn't a white man. He was a dark skinned man with white woolly hair. Skin so dark it was as if it burned in the furnace. When you change his name and you change his image, you created another God with a new doctrine that says the biblical Israelites are, are replaced by whosoever believes in Jesus. See, so even Jesus has a different doctrine than our Messiah. Not just look, a, look, a different look and a different name. He has a different doctrine because it is a different God. They have presumed to speak in the name of God and to give us new laws, new ordinances, right? Moving the Sabbath day from Saturday to Sunday, changing the Messiah's name, changing his doctrine, changing his image. They have, and so they speak in the name of of another God, Jesus. And all who, who speak in that name will die. They will die. You might want to tighten up what you're doing because when you know better, you have to do better. And if he brings you from ignorance to the light and then you go back into the darkness because it was more comfortable there because the there wasn't but it wasn't a strong light that hurt your eyes that made your head hurt that made you uncomfortable to stand in the light and only demons hate to stand in the light right mind you you will die in your sins and many of you are being led by people who are destined to die. And because they are destined to die, they are taking you with them. Who does that sound like? Sounds like Satan, right? Who is destined for the lake of fire. And because he is destined for the lake of fire, he is adamant about taking as many with him as possible. Don't go. Be careful who you follow. Verse 21. And if thou say in thine heart, how shall we know the word which the Lord hath not spoken? How will we know if the word being spoken to us by our prophet didn't come from the Lord? Verse 22, when a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, if the thing follow not, if it doesn't happen, if it does not occur, if it does not transpire, if the word is not fulfilled, nor come to pass, that that is the thing which the Lord hath not spoken, but the prophet hath spoken it presumptuously. Thou shalt not be afraid of him. You shouldn't be afraid to leave your Christian pastors. You shouldn't be afraid to leave these Christian churches. They're nobody to fear. They're false prophets. They continue to prophesy things that do not come to pass and you follow anyway. They are leading you unto death. But hear me now. Hear the voice of the shepherd. Come out of her, my people. Be not partaker of her sins. Get out of the church. Not now, but right now. Run fast, run far, run now. And while you're running, give all praise, honor, and glory to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to our Heavenly Father, Abba Yahweh, to our Heavenly King, Hamashiach Yahweh Shai. Thank you for joining me. Pray for discernment, for knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Take what you've learned, pay it forward. Each one, reach one. Shalom.